Hey everybody, it looks like we're live. We got a couple minutes before we get started, but I hope it's working. Thanks, Josh. Welcome, everybody who's joining us out there in YouTube land. Get started in just a moment. Hey everybody, thanks so much for joining us, and um, my name is Chris Good. If this is your first time watching any of my videos, welcome to my YouTube channel. Um, I'm tell you a little bit about myself and what I hope to accomplish today during the live stream, and I hope you guys get a lot out of it. I'm going to try, try, try to keep an eye on the chat. Please bear with me as there's a huge lag between when I say something where I'm at and when I see somebody respond to it in the chat. So I'll make a point to um, take a break every 10, 15 minutes or so just to catch up in case anybody has any questions as we go along. Uh, otherwise, this uh, recording is going to stay up here on the channel and you can always come back and rewind and, and do stuff. Maybe follow along if you want to grab a copy of uh, Fusion 360 and stuff like that. Anyway, like I said, my name is Chris Good. I uh, am a founding member of Decatur Makers. It's a maker space here in Decatur, Georgia, a little town inside the big city of Atlanta. And we are a, a membership maker space where people pay a monthly fee to share uh, space and equipment and tools. And we've got lots of cool things like laser cutters and engravers and sewing machines and um, we got a big CNC milling machine and a lot of cool woodworking tools and metalworking tools and welders and biohacking equipment and electronics and all kinds of stuff. So come on down to Decatur Makers. DecaturMakers.org um, is our website. You can read all about us if you haven't already. I know we have a lot of members joining us today. And uh, welcome. Welcome to Decatur Makers one and all and to new folks who are joining us as well. Anyway... Um, I have been building electric guitars at Decatur Makers for the past three or four years, and I use, I've been using Autodesk's Fusion 360 to, um, design them and to generate the tool paths that our CNC milling machine uses to carve out most of the features of the guitar and most of the important ones as well. But you can use Fusion 360 to make all kinds of three-dimensional things. And, well, two-dimensional things, too. Um, I want, today, to show you some of the basics of beginning a design in Fusion 360, uh, a couple of the techniques that I use in building electric guitars, um, or designing electric guitars uh, in the software, and I also want um, to uh, sh show you how to bring in images to help you 
sort of align your design and how to uh, bring in SVGs and scale both of those things properly so that the thing that you're making is the right size. Uh, so like I said, uh, I've been using Fusion 360 to make electric guitars. This is an example of one. One of the most recent electric guitars that I made was uh, based on the Fender Mustang. And um, this is the body that's highlighted right now. You can see that there are pockets for the pickups and for the volume controls and tone controls and the output jack. And these are routes for the tremolo system that's common to this guitar. And this is a route out for the neck that sits in there. It's bolt-on neck, just like that. And there's a pocket there for it. Um, you can see that I'm sort of rotating this thing in, in space in Fusion 360. And that's why when you're using this tool, it's really, I think it's essential to use an actual mouse to do it. Even if you're on a laptop with a trackpad, really fancy trackpad, I've got to use a three button mouse with a scroll wheel. The scroll wheel is super important because that's, that's what allows you to zoom in and to rotate and stuff like that. So that's pretty handy. Let me show you some of the other things that I've done in Fusion 360. Uh, here's a nice bass guitar that I made. Um, yeah, I'm a big fan of the Fender design, um, but this is kind of a, you, you might recognize this as, uh, well, I don't know if you would recognize this or not. This is actually a um, kind of a hybrid bass guitar. It's got uh, the body of a, of a Fender Precision Bass style guitar, but it's got two jazz style pickups because I really like the sound of those. Um, these are the routes for the pickups for the jazz style pickups. Um, the neck though is more like a tele bass neck or maybe an early, early, early 50s Fender Precision. So that's the cool thing is you can make, I mean, you can make whatever you want. You can make a guitar in the shape of a, a TARDIS or a Millennium Falcon or anything that you want to do. You can do all of that stuff. And um, you can do it here in Fusion 360. I'm planning on making uh, a Mustang style bass pretty soon. You can see it. I've started here. I've got a, kind of an image of it and I've started to sketch out some of the most important dimensions of the piece. I'm going to show you how to do that today. But like I said, uh, you don't have to do uh, CNC-based designs in here. You can do stuff for 3D printing as well. Um, here is something that I 3D printed recently. This is a pickup cover, a plastic pickup cover. <laughs> and of course, it's, it's for guitars, for a bass guitar. So this is for one part of a split coil bass pickup, and it's a plastic thing that goes around the outside of the pickup. Um, you can, once you've designed this uh, three-dimensional object, Fusion calls them bodies, you can um, go to this tool section and uh, click on the make button and it'll 3D print it for you. It'll send it to whatever um, slicer program that you've got. I use Cura and when you press that button, this opens up in Cura as an STL. Um, or, or whatever three-dimensional object file that you specify that it outputs to it. So you can design stuff in Fusion 360 for 3D printing as well. Here's another object that I designed for 3D printing. Uh, we have a filing cabinet, a credenza-style filing cabinet with uh, drawers that have little wheels on them. Um, it's vintage, so it's a bunch of the wheels have gone missing. And I just measured it and printed it out. And that brings me to another really important tool when you're working in Fusion 360. And in addition to the mouse, if you're going to be designing stuff, a lot of that stuff is going to have to be measured properly. And that's why calipers are super, super important. So you, Fusion will make it as big as you want it to be. 
and as precise as you want it to be. So you've got to be able to measure something with a high degree of precision. And this is just, these are just calipers I got off the, off the internet. And um, super handy. All right. So what I'd like to do at this point is start with a brand new design. The scariest thing in the world for a lot of people is that big blank canvas. And what do you do when, um, when that's staring you in the face? Well, uh, I'm interested in building. An, an, I'm going to start with another Fender style guitar, but I'm going to show you how we want to customize it uh, to our things. This is it. This is the big blank canvas uh, when you open up Fusion 360. And you can see that um, there's this cube up here. And if you grab it, you're actually rotating space. Uh, I'm going to reveal what the origin is. And there it's popped up on to the side of the screen. When we're rotating this in 3D space, and I'm just clicking on the scroll wheel and holding shift down to rotate. Um, you'll see that the cube shows you the view uh, that you're doing. It defaults to uh, sort of looking down on the piece along the z-axis into the xy plane. It calls that the front, but you can right click on that and you can set that um, as the top, which I kind of like to do because that that's the way we that's the way the CNC sees things. Is that's the top. In the three printing world, it kind of doesn't matter so much for CNC. I, I like to do that. One thing that I learned is that these red, green, and blue lines represent the X, Y, and Z axes because R, G, B equals X, Y, Z in this program. That's a pretty cool thing to do. R, G, B equals X, Y, Z. Whoopsie. Okay. So what do, you, what do you do now? What do you do now that you're here um, in this big blank canvas? Um, the first thing that I like to do is to start with some measurements that are really important. And in the guitar world, and you know, in the credenza wheel world, the interior, Diameter of the spool is really important, and the exterior diameter of the spool is really important. Um, in the guitar world, I think probably the most important thing on a guitar is the scale, right? That is the distance from the nut where the string, strings go over to the tuning machines all the way to the bridge. It's the, it's the distance over which the string is vibrated when the, it's not fretted. And um, that I think that I think is really the most important thing you can say about a guitar when you're building one is what is the scale. And on the guitar that I want to build, I've chosen a scale of 24 inches. So 24 inches from the bridge to the nut. And that means that the 12th fret, which is in the middle of the scale, is going to be at half of that distance, which is 12 inches. So I'm going to make two. The first thing I'm going to create in my uh, uh, design are two lines, right, that are parallel to each other and aligned with each other, and they're 12 inches. You don't have to make it. Uh, yeah, you don't. You absolutely don't have to do it in any particular plane. Uh, you can change that later on. I'm going to do it in the XY plane, right at Z0. And you can do that by creating a, oh, let's look out. Just one more thing. Let me back up a little bit. When you start this document, you're in this workspace that's called design. There's a whole bunch of workspaces here. Generative design, which I've never used before. The render design, where you can slap on textures and things like that and make your design look really, really fancy. Animation, which actually can move stuff that you do around. Simulation, which will simulate stresses and forces on it. And the manufacturer side and the drawing side. There's just so much that I haven't used here at all. I'm a, I'm a total Fusion 360 amateur with no training other than YouTube videos like this one. And... Um, 
I'm only going to work in these two areas, the design workspace, which is where we started, and the manufacturer workspace, which we probably won't get to today, but I'll come back and do it a little bit later on, maybe in another video. We're working in the design workspace, and that's where you build, that's where you design stuff. That makes a lot of sense. Um, there's several different ways that you can design things. We're starting in the solid area because we're using we're going to be working with three-dimensional solids. That's what those are the things that I just showed you were bodies that were that were solids created in the space. Um, for some special stuff, we can get into the surface thing, and for 3D printing, you can get into mesh, and you can adjust like um, the uh, you can bring in STLs and manipulate them here in mesh. We're not doing that today. We're staying in solids, but. To make a three-dimensional solid, you first have to start with a two-dimensional sketch. So I'm going to orient it just uh, with our little cube so you can see we're looking down on the XY plane. And that's the plane on which we're going to create our very first sketch. So create sketch. So it's asking right now, it's like, what plane do you want to be on? Do you want to be on the ZY plane or the ZX plane? Nope, I want to be on the XY plane. And now we are in the two-dimensional sketch environment all right i said i wanted to make a line that was 12 inches in one direction 12 inches in the other direction i might as well start it at the origin so the origin now we're fixing our origin it's going to be at the 12th fret that's interesting i don't know if i've done that before so we'll create a line and uh there's a little anchor there like when the box when you see that little box encircle the origin that's where we're going to place the first point and then you can you can see that now you've got measurements and you can make these precise or you can actually s set these to a variable value that you can specify someplace else that's one of the really cool things about fusion 360 that i have no idea how to do so we could actually set this equal to half the scale length or scale length over two and then we could specify the scale length later and then this whole thing would scale our guitar to whatever scale that we wanted to and we could change it up like that but that would require thinking ahead which i'm not very good at so i'm not going to do that um, instead i'm going to align this uh, zero degrees along the x-axis i'm going to make this thing 12 inches long all right oh and do note that we are in uh inches here you can specify what the units are um in a place that um i'm not in right now but you can specify what what the units are i'm gonna make another line extending 12 inches in this direction oh, wait a minute there we go what did i do i don't know what happened okay line Starting at the origin. Oh, I see. I've selected something and I need to unselect that. Oops, oops. There we go. I'm pausing right now because I said that I would. I'm taking a look at the chat. Corinne says, is there is there a link at the Makerspace um, on the Maker website? I don't think that we do link out to where you can download it, but it's true that there's a free version and a subscription version. There's an educational version, which I'm using right now. Uh, you can actually see at the top, it says education license for me because I'm an educator. And um there are restrictions on what you can do with the free version but i don't think anything that we're doing today is restricted um there is a hobbyist uh sort of license so there we go and thanks josh for fielding some of those questions and um please do send me references on anything thanks folks all right so now we've got that one of the other really important measurements that we need to take is the um, width of the neck at the end. 
So this measurement isn't going to help us with that too, too much right now. Uh, we know where the nut is. We know where the 12th fret is going to be. But do we really know where the end of the neck is going to be? It's somewhere in between the 12th fret and the bridge, which is at the end of this line. But we're not really sure where that is exactly yet. Um, it would be really helpful if we had a model of... Uh, at least the fretboard, that would tell us where the neck is going to end and what it's shaped like and things like that. Now, there's a whole bunch of different ways that you can uh, bring in the fret distances. There's calculators you can use. Because you're able to specify relationships among different things, you could um, make a first, threat, first fret, second fret, third fret calculator, right, that adjusts the spacing of the frets precisely for whatever scale that you want. Um, there's also technical drawings of lots and lots of different guitar styles, and you can just grab them off uh, the internet. I'm going to show you how to do that in just a second um, with some uh, PDFs of guitar designs, and I'll show you uh, how I import those in. But for this next step, I'm actually going to use a tool uh, for Fusion that was created by one of our members, Brad Anderson Jr. He's made this thing called the Guitar Engine. And the, the Guitar Engine will actually build, it'll calculate a whole guitar for you, and then all you have to do is like draw the shape of the, of the body. But everything else on the guitar is actually made for you. I'm going to use it only to do the fretboard um, today, but it will make an entire guitar. So this is what the interface for the guitar engine looks like. It's in beta version. It, there is some things in it that are a little teeny tiny buggy, but it's so, so very, very useful. Um, I'm going to use it to generate the fretboard. Uh, I have 22 frets. I have six strings. You can change the scale length here. It's actually going to be 24 inches. Little. I, you, if you're just doing the fretboard, you don't need to specify the guitar length or the body length or the width or the thickness or the neck thickness or the first fret thickness or the 12th fret thickness. You don't need to worry about that. I'm only doing the fretboard anyway. So on the fretboard tab, you can specify what radius uh, that you want. Uh, I'm trying to remember what the radius is on this thing. Nine, nine and a half inches. So nine and a half inches is what the radius is going to be. That's the curvature. Uh, over the top of the fretboard. So fretboard frets on guitars actually aren't flat. Um, in most guitars, they are in some, but they, they have a curve to them. And this is the radius of the circle that defines that curve. Um, and I said 9.5. 9.5 inches. Okay, the overall fretboard length. Well, now would be a really good time to go measure that. That would be really great. Um, I happen to have a fretboard right here in the room. Of exactly the length that I want. So, you know, this is your friend too. You use the measuring tape. Measure. Oh, you should really measure at least a couple of times. It's about 17 and a half inches. I do want it to be a quarter inch tall. How do, how do I know what all of these numbers are? Well, this is one of those things you have to think about before you start designing the, the guitar. Um, I can measure what the, um, the nut slot width is, what the nut slot depth is, what the, how wide the nut is, although it says nut, nut length, but it's actually nut width, it's 1.62. Bring that down just a little bit. A lot of this other stuff doesn't matter because I'm really only using it to get, uh, to get a, <laughs> you really have to type fast. I'm really only using this to get the fret spaces, honestly. And, you know, 
maybe the markers as well. I said this was in beta. Marker diameter is actually marker radius. Marker depth, I hope, is pretty accurate. We'll see later on. Um, I'm going to leave everything else alone. Um, like I said, I'm going to show you another way that we can get the fret spacing in here. There's at least a couple of them. I know that experienced luthiers watching this will tell you. Yeah, I know how to do that. That's OK. All right. Let's see what it looks like when we create this guitar. Oh, I hope I did everything right. Fly without a net, people. There we go. Now, uh, you'll notice that we've created this thing here. Um, we started the, these. This list of stuff here in the browser makes sense. There's the origin. You can actually hide it. Let's make that go away. There's bodies. We haven't made any bodies yet. There's sketches. We've only got two lines in our sketch, right? I can hide them or show them by clicking here. And, um, but now we've got this whole other thing here with this dot next to it. And the dot says activate component. Mr. Anderson Jr., in his wisdom, when he built this guitar engine, you, when you tell it to generate the fretboard or the body or any of that stuff, it does it as a new component. Components are just a way of divvying up um, designs that you're working on that may fit together or interact with each other, and they're super handy. When I'm doing guitars, I do separate components for the body, the neck, and the fretboard. They're typically the three components that I'm working with, but you may have other components, like I'm going to add a component later on for the pick guard and things like that. So um, each component has its own origin, which is in the same place as the origin for the whole project, and it has its own bodies. There's the fretboard and this extension coming off of the end that has the nut slot in it. and uh, it has sketches as well. Now, all of these sketches are hidden. Let's go ahead and hide the bodies. But you can, look, I can keep just the fret lines. That's kind of what I wanted. Um, the marker positions and the nut slot profile and all of these things are sketches, just like the sketch that we created earlier to make our uh, line indicating the scale length. The other thing that I really wanted to get was the width of the neck, right, at the spot that it's going to join the body. So let's reveal our body one more time. Um, let's hide this origin here, get that out of the way. And you can see we've got this three-dimensional thing yet. Yeah? It's in the plane of this line that uh, we did. But what we want to do is we want to move these bodies, both of them, and I've right clicked on this and we're going to move this. What we want to do is we want to line the nut with this end of that line. That's right there. So I'm going to click uh, right clicked. I selected both of these bodies. There's the fretboard and there's the extension beyond the fretboard. And I'm going to move copy both of these bodies together. Right? And I'm just going to grab this arrow. And I'm going to do it until that's aligned exactly with the end there. Now, I want to zoom in and see if I got real, real close to it. It's kind of hard to see. Let's move that out of the way. I think it's really, really close. The reason that I'm not too, too worried about it being exactly precisely, even though I'd said this was the most important measurement of this whole thing, is that on the real guitar, we're going to have um, saddles on the bridge where we're going to be able to adjust the intonation. And those adjustments are going to be different for different uh, strings. And so what's really important here is that we get it pretty 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 in the ballpark let's see where that dot is in the sketch like right on the 12th fret that's that dot where those two lines join that's pretty darn close um in the interest of time i'm just going to leave that where it is i like it okay now i know how wide 
the neck is going to be. Now I know how big the neck pocket uh, to make. I'm just going to drop that right there. Is it a coincidence that this is almost exactly 19 inches? I don't know. Maybe. Let's take a pause. And we're at the half hour. I'm going to look in, into the chat. Link to Guitar Engine. Yes, I will. I will post a link to the Guitar Engine um, in the notes for this video uh, when everything's all said and done. Okay. I'm going to go back and make our main component, which is going to be where we click, where we keep the body of our guitar. So the main component is going to be the body. Then we're going to do one for the... Uh, we've already got one for the fretboard. Then we're going to do a separate one for the neck. Close all this stuff up. Make that the main component. And you will still see the um, fretboard there. Uh, oh, that's where the fretboard used to be. Here, let's... I do want to still see the fretboard, but I don't... Oh, those are that's the sketches for the other stuff. That's okay. It goes away when you click on the main thing. Let's build a body around this guitar. Oh, it's going to be gorgeous. All right. Um, at this point, I want to bring in an image to help us to help us uh, draw the body of the guitar. Um, I'm also going to bring in an SVG for some of the more precise kind of components. And uh, let's talk about how to do that. I found an image of the uh, guitar that I want to build. And you could take a picture of one or you could draw one. That would be totally fine. Here's the image. I'm going to try to drag this into the, whoops, drag, drag this into the part of my screen that is broadcasting on YouTube. All right. Maybe now people are wondering, oh, you're you're designing Fender guitars and uh, they're going to come after you for violating their uh, patents and, and trademarks and stuff. Like, listen, uh, I am not selling these as Fender guitars. I'm not selling them at all, but I'm... <laughs> I'm only I'm only designing this guitar as an exercise. All right. I'm just trying to figure out how to how to make guitars. I admire the shape of this guitar and I'm going to have it inspire uh the build of this guitar. I hope that that's not a problem. Um but your mileage may vary. That's how I feel about the copyright patent trademark thing. Um, this is a JPEG. I'm going to bring it into Fusion 360. We're going to bring it into Fusion 360 as something called a canvas. So now that we're back in our main component here, I'm going to insert from this insert menu. You notice the sketch controls are gone because we're not in sketch mode. We're in the solid mode, regular design workspace. There's this little menu over here called insert and I'm going there's so many things you can insert today we're going to insert two types of things a canvas which is an image it can be a bitmap image like a JPEG or a TIFF or a BMP or a um, S, uh, uh, what's the a PNG all those kind of things you can import as canvases we're also going to invert a vector graphics image in a little bit um, called an SVG and uh, here we go let's place a canvas and I'm going to upload one of these things from the old desktop. And here it is, Mustang JPEG. Now, you'll notice uh, when you select the XY plane that uh, that image, it's here, but it's like really tiny and it's in the wrong orientation. Can you see how tiny that is? It'll, frit, it'll actually fit in one of these fret dot holes. Okay, well that's because when you import images and SVGs, they don't scale precisely to the scale that you want. And that's why these measurements that I put at the very beginning, that was the first step I did, having a measurement that's measured exactly in your design is super important. So I'm going to um, actually make this a little bit bigger.
Uh, and I also need to rotate it so it's in the right orientation. And there's some snaps that Fusion makes it very handy uh, to do that. So I'm scaling this up, right, until it's matching this pretty, pretty close. And you'll notice that in the scale factor, you can actually type in numbers and things like that to make it even more precise. Um, and you can dial things down that way until you get it lined up exactly where you want it to be. And I'm going to spend just a little bit of time here trying to do just that. Because of the snappiness of this, it makes it a little bit of a challenge. And again, I'm not doing parts of, right now, I'm not doing parts of the headstock or things like that, so it doesn't need to be, see, I'm not too, too worried about the scale, but let me play with it just a little bit more. It is a little tiny bit too big. Okay, notice uh, this part right here, this is, the, uh, this is the bridge. These are the saddles that I was talking about. Here's the point where the strings are actually going to cross the bridge. Some of them are a little bit behind this 24-inch point. There's a couple that are a little teeny tiny teeny bit, bit further than that. Um, the size is pretty pretty close it's a little tiny bit too long so i'd love to bring it down not that far but like point Okay. I like where that is right now. This is very, very close to um, where that edge of the bridge is going to be. And again, these are adjustable, so we can move those around a little bit. Now that we've got um, an image here, we can actually draw the shape of the body uh, that we wanted. And um, it doesn't have to be in this shape. You can draw whatever body that you want. If you want it to be uh, exactly the size, that would be just fine, um, but it doesn't have to be. There is one more measurement that I want to do before we go further, and that is um, I have a really nice piece of wood. I'm looking at it right now. I'll get up and show it to you in a moment. It's um, a piece of sapili that's 8-2 um, uh, sapili stock. And um, it is uh, super gorgeous, but it's only 12 inches wide. And so I want to make sure that whatever guitar I design is going to fit in that. I'm really glad I thought of this right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit this sketch that we've got. And here's the thing. Uh, somewhere along here, do you see? On the very bottom of the screen here, oh, you can't see it because my picture's in the way. Let me move that out of the way. All right, boop. Um, here on the left side, we've got this little timeline of things uh, that we've done so far. Like we inserted this canvas and we moved this thing. Before that, we created this thing and then we, we had started with a sketch. This is a timeline. If I edit the sketch, I'm actually going back in time to edit something that, that's, that existed before any of these other things did before we created the fretboard and before we created the um canvas as well uh and that means we won't see those things anymore and it also means that um well it has some consequences for some other stuff 
when you edit something that was created before other stuff, you can cause real bad problems, especially if things are constrained to previous things, they have to align with them. I don't think we've gotten into that trouble yet. I don't think anything I'm going to do is going to create a problem now, but editing old sketches can create real bad problems. Just heads up for that. Um, I'm going to do it anyway, because this is something that I should have done before. Now, as soon as I click on edit sketch, look, everything disappeared. And if we wanted to, like outline that body in the picture, we couldn't. We can't see it because it didn't exist when we created the sketch. What I want to do is create a rectangle that represents the stock that I have. So I'm going to create something called a center rectangle. I'm going to make the center point that spot at the bridge, and I'm going to make it as wide and as tall as the stock that I have. But I have to get it from across the room, so I'll be right back. Hello, Sapili. So this is the wood that I was talking. Isn't that pretty? Look at that. Look how shiny. Isn't that gorgeous? Okay. So this is the this is the wood that I got to be working with. And once more, I have my handy tool. We're gonna see how big this is. It's 19 inches by. It's just just over a foot. It's 12 and 1 8 inches. It's it's 12 and 1 8 inches. Okay. I thought it was just 12. This is good news. Uh, so I'm going to make this uh, 12.125 by 19. Okay, now I'm going to finish this sketch. Oh, look at that. It's just barely. Oh, my goodness. I think it'll fit. I think it's going to fit. <laughs> And guys, I can't tell you how important it is to measure the stuff that you have. If you if you want to put this kind of bridge on it that looks like that, and I think I do, measure it. Measure the thing that you have, not the thing that looks like it in the picture that size. Get the thing in your hands. Get at the calipers and measure it. If those are the pickups that you want, make get buy them. Buy them. But measure them before you start cutting into your beautiful piece of sapila or whatever else that you have lying around. Okay. That's a lesson that I'm trying to teach now, but um, I need to learn it myself so many times. All right. Now, uh, you'll notice that I didn't put this in the right spot. I need to move this um, over like uh, this far. Uh, at least as far as the end of this thing, so that I kind of know where, where stuff is. I mean, I don't really, because what I was really concerned about was the width of the piece, because I know that it's long enough for this guitar. Um, but here's the thing. If I decide to move this sketch element, right, uh, I can't do it. It won't let me do it because it's constrained. This entire this line is part of this rectangle that I that I drew in the sketch environment, and I fixed it to the origin, just like the end of this line is fixed to the origin, and that's why it's not letting me move the whole thing. I'm going I'm going to move it though. I'm going to move it uh, by editing the sketch, and I'm going to get rid of that constraint. Okay, when I'm hov hovering over the dot, I see three little constraints. This is an uh, intersection constraint, right? That, or sorry, a coincident constraint where um, the center of the rectangle is coincident with the origin. And when you click on that, see that in the lower right hand corner, which you can't see because now, now my picture's in front of that. Okay, I'll figure out this YouTube thing eventually. If you mouse over this, it says in the lower right hand corner, you have a coincident constraint. There you go. So let's delete that. All my constraints have disappeared. 
And now I can highlight these pieces of the rectangle and I can move them the distance that I want it to. Isn't that handy? I think it is. Let's see if I managed to capture the end of that uh, horn. Just barely. I'm going to move it just a little tiny bit more. Oh, that makes it a lot easier. I can. Okay, fantastic. Look at that. I think it's going to fit. Okay, so we could start a new sketch and we could start drawing the outline of the body now that we know where it's going to be. But I want to show you one other thing um, where we could actually get some drawings in place. This is just, this is another method that we could use. It involves another program that's called Inkscape. And I think that I can show it to you. I think I can. Here it is. Inkscape is a free drawing program. And um, I feel like Martha Stewart, where I've already got one uh, in the oven that, I've already, that I made earlier. Uh, let me get this out of the way, and I can show you what, what I was doing here in the first place. All right. I've created a blank document that is large enough to accept the, um, the thing that I want to bring in. And what I want to bring in is um, I found on this website called electricherald.com, that's Herald, like the newspaper, H-E-A-R-A-L-D, Electric Herald. I'll put a link in the, in the description of the video when we're done. Electric Herald has designs for all kinds of guitars that people have posted. And they're in uh, JPEGs that you can download, and they're technical drawings. And as far as I can tell, they're some, well, some of them are more accurate than others. But this one's pretty, pretty accurate. And uh, that's a Mustang body that I found. But I also found this cool Jazzmaster Jaguar template, which is super handy. Um, there we go. And it's got like pockets for pickups and all kinds of stuff like that. Uh, that's pretty cool. Okay, so, um, but these are JPEGs and that's not going to help us draw sketches. That's just kind of weird. So what, what can we do? Well, I'm gonna, in Inkscape, I'm going to uh, click on Import, uh, Command-I, and I'm gonna bring in this Fender Mustang body um, uh, image, and then I'm going to uh, reposition this so it's somewhat in the middle of the canvas that we've got here. There we go. Yeah, great. Uh, still an image, but you can do this really cool thing where you um, uh, trace this object. So we're going to do select path from the Inkscape path menu. And I'm sorry that you can't see that on the screen. Um, but it's uh, shift command C to uh, make a path out of the object. And I'm going to choose the color of that under stroke paint. Fill we're going to leave blank. Uh, but there we go. It should have traced this object. And if you... Uh, do this node editing uh, thing right here. And you change the arrow from the uh, select and transform arrow to the node editing arrow. I'm gonna zoom in here and you can see that I've created paths. And if you can't see it on your screen, when I mouse over that, they're red. And that's how you know that it is a uh, vector path. In fact, um, there is still an image here that I can now just get rid of um, if I didn't get rid of it already. Okay. What we can do now is uh, save this as an SVG. I'm going to call it Mustang SVG, save it on the desktop.
And now we're going to bring this into Fusion 360 using the same insert menu again. We're going to uh, choose insert. And now we're instead of inserting a canvas, we're going to insert an SVG. Except I kind of want to do that as a new sketch. I hope I did this right. Oh, goodness. Well, let's select the sketch plane. Oh, it did create a new sketch. That's good. Oh, but look what happened. Oh, gee whiz. Golly, gee willikers. What happened was um, the same thing as the canvas. This thing came over as a sketch element but not scaled correctly and that is kind of a bummer but since we have our um, image here and our other sketch elements we can scale this up to the size that we need so let's move this around and we'll do the same same thing oh it's pretty close it's getting pretty close now again this is offset why is it offset from the image there is there something wrong no don't worry about that um, the main thing that uh, i want to align this with uh, the most important part of the sketch element here i'm actually going to hide that picture uh, right now hide the canvas um, is the width of this um, it's the width of this slot right here so as long as this line as exactly the width of the fretboard that we've got, and it's a little bit off, um, we're probably going to be okay. So I'm going to make an adjustment here. Um, check it again. You know, because this is a super precise measurement, one thing that we could do is um bring this in yeah let's do that let's do this this is a trick that i showed in a, in a different video let's reinsert the svg it's been so long since i've done it this way i forgot all about it let's reinsert this svg and do it this way Boom. Oops. Specify the. There we go. Now it's in. What I want to do is measure the width of this because I know the distance that it should be. And it ain't 0.575 inches. But if you write this down, you can take the ratio of this to the distance that you need it to be, and then you can enter that as your scaling factor. Bear with me and I'll show you exactly what I mean by that. Um, I'm gonna remeasure this. It should be 2.2 inches. Go from this point all the way to this point. 2.182. That's okay. I'll take it. I'll take it. 2.182. If that's 2.182, I got to write these down. Um, if that was 2.182, and this dimension here. was 0.575. How many times is 5.75 going to 2.182? That's the scaling factor that we need to apply when we reinsert this SVG. So I'm just going to do this. Uh, I know I divided one into the other, but then I can take the reciprocal and it's... Um... Oh, wait a minute. Uh, 
2.182 divided by 0.575 is 3.7948. I'm just going to copy this to the clipboard and then I'm going to reinsert the SVG. So we'll get rid of this uh, measurement thing. We're going to undo. Insert SVG. And now the scale plane factor should give us the right size sketch. <laughs> of course, we're going to have to move it. Should have moved it before I scaled it. Thanks for your patience, folks. I know this is not the most exciting part of it, but I think it's fun. There we go. Now that I've done this, I'm going to tell you why I don't like doing it. <laughs> now that it's done, I'll tell you why I really, really would prefer not to do it this way. Um, I'm going to hide some of this other stuff, uh, finish the sketch. I want to hide the fretboard and our first sketch and the canvas and look at what we've got. Um, for one thing, the blue part here means that you have completely enclosed uh, an area. And this part down here should be enclosed, but it's not because these lines aren't connected to each other somewhere. But it's really hard to see that they're not until you zoom in and you start looking around and find stuff like this. Because Inkscape is free, but it really did not trace this JPEG very well. It's made a couple of mistakes here. And that's why I don't really like to use this as the um, main way to design most parts of the guitar. I still like to do it, uh, still like to do some stuff with it, but eh, not so much uh, this part, too, too much. Um, so, uh, you know, what can we do? There's a couple of ways that you can fix little orphan things like that. You can just um, get rid. You can delete them. You can hit the delete button and and make them go away. But um, you know, there's a tool that helps you uh, close gaps, right? There's uh, another tool that you can download and help you close those gaps, and I can link to that in the description as well. But instead of that, uh, I think what I'm going to do is just kind of ignore this one. And I'm going to create a new sketch and base it on the image so that we can have the, um, the body style that we want. I'm going to pause right now and look in the chat and see what's what. Link to the guitar engine. Make it parametric. Fix it later. Yes, it is true. <laughs> That's the cool thing about Fusion is that uh, you can set these all to like different variables and stuff like that. And that's pretty handy. Okay. Oh, and snap to grid. I don't, I thought it was off, but I'm not really too, too sure about that. But um, let's go back. We've got just a little bit more time left and I want to uh, hide the sketch, show the first one and the canvas. And we're going to create a new sketch and we're just going to outline a couple of these things based on the drawing 
Um, and the other fretboard sketch that we've got. There we go. All right, let's do it. Create sketch in this plane. Here's where I'm going to introduce you to um, another, you know what? I'm going to move our canvas down just a little bit. Let me get out of the sketch environment. Then sketch. Edit canvas. There we go. I like it. Here's what we're going to do. Um, let's edit the sketch. And you'll notice up here, there's several things that we could be drawing. We already did a rectangle and a line. And now I want to introduce you to a new thing that is a fit point spline. Uh, splines allow you to draw curves and to edit them super precisely. And edit them super, super precisely. So let's fit a spline to here. We're going to start like right there, right at the fretboard. And we're going to first try to match this curve. The f you can do some super fancy curves with a very small number of spline points. And most experienced Fusion users will tell you uh, it's better to use the minimum number of spline points. Um, and I don't really know a good metric for doing that um, maybe, maybe somebody more experienced than I can go in the chat it's like when how do you decide when to put a spline point um, you need them to establish the shape of the curve and you're like well Chris uh, you're not tracing that very well like I know we're gonna come back and edit that out just a little bit later on um, And I'll show you how to do it by adjusting the handles on these different splines. I said that the problem with the SVG that we imported was that we didn't completely enclose the, um, the body of the guitar. And that is a problem. We're going to complete this circle as we work our way around the body. I know it's getting a little wonkier toward the end. Bear with me. Uh, everything's going to be fine. Uh, before I start tweaking this, I am going to move one thing just a little bit. The thing that I'm grabbing onto right now is a handle. And handles specify the, the angle that the line is going to exit a, um, 
a spline point from. And by doing that, you can adjust the shapes of the curves. Actually, I want to move this spline point out just a little bit like that. Um, see, this one's coming out at an angle that's not ideal. We want to sort of flatten that out like that. There we go. We're getting a little bit closer here. So by editing, changing the angle at which these things come out, and you can also move those spline points too, if it helps you, you can get the curve. Um, you can really get any curve that you want to. You can insert spline points too. Here's the problem though. If you move these around so that they are coincident with something else and they snap, like that, that's going to cause trouble later on. So try not to make any uh, spline point handle ends coincident with parts of your image, and then you should be okay. Okay, but I'm not quite done yet. I want to close the gap. Um, even though this is really sitting very close to this line, it's not coincident with it because that's um, this line that you see here isn't a sketch element. Um, it's part of the it's part of what defines this body. We could change that, but um, not too too worried about that right now. What I want to do right now is um, start the curve of this um, neck heel right here. And I'm going to move these around, so don't don't worry too too much about where these are right now. And I'm trying not to make that coincident with that. You see that spline handle there? Ooh, it's just not in a great place. All right. So many spline handles everywhere. Don't worry, folks, we're closing in on a really exciting part very soon. As soon as this thing is closed, we're going to start um, making something that's in three dimensions. We've been in two dimensions for a long time now. Okay, just a couple of straight lines to connect everything. So we're connecting these two points. And we're going to connect uh, these two points, this one down here, with this one right here. All right. Now, you might not have noticed this, but um, if we hide our canvas, you'll see that I've got, um, wait a minute, not that sketch. You'll see now that when I click on the inside of the sketch that we just completed, I want to hide the other stuff too. Get get rid of that fretboard. Okay. It's shaded blue uh, here in um, in my version of Fusion. If you click on that, it turns a darker shade of blue. That means that um, you're able to select this area and you can now manipulate it in three dimensions. And this is gonna be uh, the first uh, extrusion operation that we're gonna do. This is where we get to 3D. Here we go. Um, if you right click on this, get your little menu up there, and I'm going to choose extrude. Now, um, how far are you gonna extrude? Well, that's where <laughs> You need to get out your calipers again. How uh, how thick do you want this thing to be? Well, you know, guitars are 
Guitars are different. Some of them are one and three quarter inches. Some of them are one and a half inches. I'm going to actually measure the one that I want. Good news. This one's 1.5 inches. And... Uh, which way do we go? This arrow wants you to pull it up and go that way. Uh, but I'm going to go down below the plane of the sketch. Uh, that means I'm going to extrude in the, extrude in the negative dimension, um, in negative direction, 1.5 inches. All right. I mean, that's pretty much it. We could... Um, we could do a couple of things at this point. We could cut out a router template from this out of MDF and then just use a router to make a guitar. You could actually design a, um, oops. <laughs> I just noticed something. I made, why didn't anybody say something? Oh, <laughs> I need a part of the guitar under this thing. Oh my goodness. Let's go back because we weren't quite done yet. Um, we weren't quite done yet. What we needed is a little, just a little rectangle out of here. This is the neck pocket. It's super, super important. But um, we kind of do need to keep editing on this sketch just a little, a little bit. Well, that's what you get. Um, I'd like this to come out just a little bit more and head down this way, and then I want it to meet out in that direction. So. I'm actually going to extend this line. Uh, can I do that? No, no. Let's edit sketch. There we go. Make sure that okay. Let's break this coincident. I'm just gonna move this for a little bit. Oops. Oh, that's hard. How about this? Let's start this here. It's uh, one degree. Free handing it at this point, just having a lot of fun. Could use a two-point box to make the neck pocket, but I kind of want it to be a little bit curvy as we come out here. Let's not forget to grab this guy, reconnect him. There we go. That looks a lot better, and I feel better about the whole thing. Now, is this absolutely perfect? It's going to have a little squared off thing about there. Well, sure. I mean, we can make a little adjustment here to uh, smooth it out just a little tiny bit. Do the same thing over here with this guy. Um, but I'm not too, too worried about that. One reason is that we're going to be cutting this out of wood. And if we get something with a little bumpy corner, we're going to be sanding it anyway a lot. There's a lot of sanding that goes into this. And so you won't, uh, it's not going to make that much difference in the long run. Well, I do want to extend it out just a little bit. Okay. 
That's okay. That's okay. Now. Now let's finish our sketch and let's extrude this whole thing, shall we? We're going to make this negative one and a half inches. Error. Combining geometry. Weird. That's interesting. I hate it when the sketch elements don't align completely. I'm doing a little bit of quick troubleshooting. There's um there's a problem with the sketch that we just created over here where one of these dots isn't aligning with the other one, I think. Those are coincident. These are coincident. But you see how that line goes red? That means there there's a problem with uh, these two things where they're not completely touching each other. Well, when in doubt, try, try again. I do want to... Um, simplify this just a little bit so that we can get extruding and get start cutting some of these pockets. I should have taken Josh's advice and just made a little rectangle. Let's do this. Ordinarily, I wouldn't do that, but just to get rid of that red line, let's simplify it just a little bit. And like I said, we're going to be sanding this down lots anyway. Finish that sketch. Oh, don't tell me you've done it again. No. Let's read the error and see what it said. Because you're going to see stuff like this too. Inconsistent information in vertex and co-edge attributes. This is why people hate fusion, because something that should be really simple. Hmm. Well, that's fascinating. Now I'm just interested. Like, why can't we connect these two things? What if we did this? I got an idea it has something to do with this point. Sometimes I have to zoom way in. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to leave this alone for right now. And I'm going to come back and fix it later on. Because I know you guys are having fun watching this part. I do want to do a couple of different things, though, for you. 
uh, while we are still here and we got just a little bit of little bit of time left I'm gonna extend this a proper amount and um, stay tuned for another video explaining why that didn't work because I will find out it's because and it's because like everything else in fusion the reason that happened is because I told fusion to do something and it did exactly what I told it to do so uh, now that we have the shape like what else do we need to do? Well, we would need to fix this neck pocket. It is, like I said, probably the most important thing that um, uh, has to happen. Um, but there's a couple other things that we need to do as well. And to do that, I kind of want to bring back this sketch that I told you to forget about. And, um, well, one of the things is to make a control pocket. Um, and it needs to come down into the body of the guitar so that we can attach uh, an output jack and a volume and tone control in this space. And um, even though I really didn't like that sketch because the lines didn't line up and we weren't able to extrude properly um, using that sketch, uh, it did give us the placement uh, ish kind of sort of the proper placement of some of these pockets like the routing for the pickups is something that if we were going to choose these pickups then that's what we would do um, we'd be able to drop these all of these pockets down here and uh, make holes uh, in this body that we just created that are the right size and depth and shape and things like that so I'm going to do that with our uh, control cavity and when you extrude this down instead of making a new body it's actually defaulting to cutting a hole in the other one I'm gonna go down an inch minus one inch we could I mean we could actually make a new body or a new component or um, something like that but we're going to use the cut operation uh, as part of the extrude to get us that hole that we're going to need for our components. We won't see that hole because it's going to be covered up by this panel, right? I'm actually going to redraw the sketch for this panel because I have the part in my hand and I want it to be exactly the size and shape of the panel. So I'm going to take a picture of it bring that in as another canvas and overlay it and create a new sketch um, for that so that when I adjust this um, pick guard it's going to be the right shape. If I were going to use these uh, pockets for the electronics here's what I would do. Um, select all that stuff. Right. Well, wait a minute. Uh, I probably would have edited this out before so that I could extrude this properly. That's all right. These are supposed to be little screw holes for the controls that would go in here. I think I figured out what was wrong with that neck pocket. There's two lines there. Um, just like there's two lines here. But you have to zoom in to find them. But I'm going to take care of that later on. Um, 
the depth of this doesn't need to be the full inch. I think it's more like uh, three quarters of an inch deep. Um, but again, it's something that we will want to measure uh, with the parts that you have in hand to make sure that you're routing out pockets that are as deep as you want them to be. Let's hide that sketch now after we've cut that out and see what we've got so far. Pretty cool. All right, so if, when we fix that neck pocket issue, uh, I think we're well on our way. Now, um, electric guitars don't look like that. I mean, let's go back and look at the canvas. Um, get rid of that body that we just made. These have like nice soft curvy edges to them. Can't we, how do we get the curvy edge to it? Well, you could model that in Fusion 360. It's totally possible for you to do that. So if we bring our, sorry about that, if we bring our body back and hide our canvas, uh, we could do something called a fillet where um, we actually round this over and you can specify the radius of the fillet uh, this way, of course, uh, because of the uh, angle over here, we're actually not able to do that. Um, but I got to tell you, because we're cutting this out on the CNC and there's a router table literally right next to it, um, the CNC would take hours to do a round over um, of this edge right here. And I found that you you can just put a round over bit in the router and it'll be done in moments. Uh, it, it really is less than a five minute job to round this over just perfectly at whatever radius that you want to just get that radius bit and do it on the routing table, router table next to our CNC at Decatur Makers. Um, you really would wait too long to do that. So right tool for the right job. And this is the way that I'm gonna leave the body. Of course, we're gonna come back and fix this horrible error. Um, but that's that. Okay, what did we do today? Um, we learned about the sketch um, area, the sketch mode, right? Where we're making two dimensional things in a plane. Um, you can make three-dimensional sketches uh, later on. I'll do another one of these where we can talk about how to do a um, how to do a neck, which is a little bit more complicated. Um, we learned how to bring in canvases so that we can trace pictures of things that we want to make. We can trace them in sketch mode. We learned how to scale those canvases to make them the right size of the thing, given some initial measurements that we thought to be crucial. And we also learned how to insert SVGs and scale them precisely um, to make uh, sketches that then we can use later on to extrude to make uh, three-dimensional uh, bodies, right? So we scaled this up. We learned that there's some problems with that. We also learned that there's some problems with um, um, making uh, uh, new sketches and aligning everything and uh, doing with without errors. Uh, and that's just the nature of fusion. Um, so that's where we're at today. Thank you guys so much for hanging out on YouTube Live. This was interesting. I actually had a really good time and I'm glad to see uh, 15 people watching. Thanks so much for your patience. Um, stick out for just a little bit. I'll keep an eye on the chat, but otherwise I'll see you around the makerspace. All right now I'm gonna look and see what on earth happened with this thing. I think it's this thing right here that's the problem. Feel free to hang out and watch me struggle with Fusion 360. That's what it's all about. I think I got it.
James is asking, do you have a video on creating toolpaths? I do. If you look on my channel, you'll find um, steps 0 through 10 or 11 or 12 on how to do electric guitars, and you'll be able to find them there. Hey, you know what? I did fix it. Oh, no, I didn't. Oh, fiddlesticks. Vertex and go edge. Vertex and go edge. Vertex. Mm -hmm. I'm going to keep editing. Years from now, somebody's watching this going like, I know how to fix it. If only I could go back in time and help him. Uh-huh.
All right. Here's what I found, folks. If you're still watching us, and thanks for the likes. Um, I'm going to go back and redo the uh, pocket. But this is the body that we want. I hope you guys learned something. And I know I did. And uh, if you like, I'll do some more live streams um, working on guitars and building guitars in Fusion 360. And we'll both learn as we go, all of us together. So thanks again. And um, come on by, come on by the makerspace.